Today, I'll talk about the allocation of FHWA, Federal Highway Administration funds for complex projects. Um, so first of all, what funds are we allocating? So PAX receives an allocation of capital improvement funding every year. This allocation includes state and FHWA funding, and the state money goes to the PAX Municipal Partnership Initiative, MPI. 40% of the FHWA money goes to the PAX Collector Paving Program, and 60% of the FHWA money goes to complex projects. So it's that 60% we're talking about now. How much funding is it? It's about 2.5 million in FHWA funds. Now, any city or town or agency that receives some of this FHWA funding is required to also provide some of their own funding, and that's the local match. For the most part, the minimum requirement is 25% local funding. So when you add that in, we have about 3.3 million for complex projects. How does a complex project receive this funding? So first, cities and towns and other agencies have to apply for the funding. Next, a scoring committee scores the applications and the projects are ranked by score. And this year, the committee used the scoring criteria in the new funding framework that was adopted in April. Um, then the RTAC and the policy board select the projects for funding. So to back up just a bit, what is a complex project? Complex projects are large projects that take several years to design and construct. Um, and because they take several years, PACS programs them or decides to fund them uh, in two phases. First for preliminary design report, PDR, which I'll talk about next, and second, when PDR is, PDR is completed for construction. What is PDR? Um, there's more information on this slide than you need to know, but PDR is essentially the first step in developing a project. It's the initial design. So when we fund for PDR first, PDR, PDR provides more information about scope of work and timeline and cost, and then we're ready to fund for construction. How does a project get construction funding? So if PACS funds a project for PDR, PACS is committed to funding that project for construction in the future. The project sponsor wouldn't need to reapply for construction funding. Um, sometimes projects use other funding for PDR, and in that case, a project sponsor would need to apply for construction funding from PACS. Um, so who applied for funding this year? PACS received nine applications, all of these are for PDR except for Wyndham's project. Um, Wyndham funded its own PDR and is now requesting construction funds from PACS. How did these projects score? Like I said earlier, a scoring committee scored the applications for funding. And um, here on the screen, the projects are listed from highest score to lowest score. Portland's Libby Town Safety and Accessibility Project received the highest score based on the criteria in the funding framework. Um, after consulting with DOT, uh, PACS determined that some of the projects would require additional analysis, what we're calling Enhanced Project Scoping, or EPS, before they're eligible to receive federal funding for PDR. And this additional scoping helps identify issues, environmental impacts, for example, that could substantially affect the cost of or the time to deliver a project, or even if a project could be delivered at all. And so it's important to do some analysis before committing federal funds since funding PDR is a commitment to fund construction later. So you can see here the, the Portland Forest Avenue, Gorham, Crosstown Trail, and Falmouth Corners intersections are removed from consideration for federal funds for this year. And these municipalities may choose to fund EPS on their own or there, there may be funding available in the next PACS Unified Planning Work Program or UPWP. How much do the remaining projects cost? So the current request amounts and the future construction costs are shown on the screen now in the two different columns. For the five remaining PDR projects, the requests for FHWA funds range from about 14,000 for Gorham's traffic signals and pedestrian lighting to about 260,000 for the Saco Island multimodal bridge. Um, Wyndham's request for construction is about 1.15 million. And it's not shown here, but Wyndham is proposing to provide a 50% local match. Um, the table on the screen also shows the future construction costs for the PDR projects, and these total about 17 million. And again, this is important because while the current request column is what PACS would fund this year, PACS would again be committed to the future construction costs for any project that PACS funds for PDR. Um, now for the Saco Island Multimodal Bridge, a feasibility study identified four alternatives with different bridge types. Uh, this table shows the cost for the most expensive alternative about eight and a half million in future construction costs. 
and the table on this screen shows instead the least expensive alternative, which is about 4.3 million in future construction costs. And this, this also changes the current request total slightly from about 1.7 million to about 1.6 million. Um, and then the, the future construction total decreases from about 17 million to about 13 million. Um, so after looking at these future construction costs, you may wonder how much construction funding PACS is already committed to right now. There are three projects that PACS has funded for PDR in past years that have not yet completed PDR and are not yet ready for construction funding, one in Biddeford and two in Portland. And currently we expect that in total, these three projects will need about 15.6 million in construction funding in the future. Um, if you remember, PAC's annual allocation is about 3.3 million. So these three projects account for about five years worth of the PAC's allocation. Are there any other projects that are ready for construction funding? Yes, there are two, a multi-use path in South Portland and William Clark Drive improvements in Westbrook. These two projects were funded before the two-phase PDR first policy. So they have already been funded. They were funded for design and construction all at once, um, but they are over budget and are requesting additional funds. Um, so we can see it all in one place, in one table. What are the projects we're choosing from this year? So the column on the left lists the five new PDR projects that are ready for federal funding. The column in the middle lists the one new construction project and the column on the right lists the two existing construction projects. Um, how do we compare scores between them? So first in the table on the left, you've already seen the scores for the new projects, five PDR and one construction. And then in the table on the right, the two existing construction projects went through an application and scoring process to get selected years ago. So we can't compare the scores, but it's helpful to remember those projects did go through a selection process. So the PACS policy board is asked to decide how to allocate FHWA funding to complex projects. So what should we consider? Um, first, what are the project scores? The new funding framework that was used to score these projects was developed to help PACS prioritize how to allocate limited funding. Um, should PACS prioritize PDR projects or construction projects or both? So funding PDRs advances projects closer to shovel ready status and makes them potentially competitive for discretionary funding opportunities like federal grants or perhaps makes them ready for any increases in um, formula funding. However, funding PDRs commits PACs to construction costs in the future. Um, we can't uh, rely on this discretionary funding that may or may not be available. So then also the overall funding situation. What is the future cost of construction for any new PDR projects, plus any projects that have already received PDR funding in the past? And how does that compare to PACs annual allocation? So there are a lot of possibilities for different ways PACs could allocate the funds to different combinations of projects. Um, so staff put together a few options to kind of show the possibilities. So here on the screen now is option one, a PDR heavy allocation. This option shows PACs funding all five new PDR projects, plus the construction projects in South Portland and Westbrook. And this would leave PACs with a future construction commitment of 13 to 17 million, depending on the alternative Saco and Biddeford select for the Saco Island multimodal bridge. So this, uh, this slide shows the highest cost alternative. And this next slide shows the lowest cost alternative. Uh, as mentioned in the staff report, a variation on this option could be to fund the Wyndham project rather than the South Portland and Westbrook projects for construction. Next is option two, a construction heavy allocation. And this option shows PACS funding the new construction project in Wyndham, the two existing construction projects in South Portland and Westbrook, and then just one PDR, the highest scoring PDR, the Libbytown project in Portland. And this option would leave PACS with a future construction commitment of about 6.2 million. And now here's a third option a limited allocation with savings option. And this option shows PACS funding the two existing construction projects in South Portland and Westbrook and the top three scoring PDRs, the Libbytown Project in Portland, the Saco Island Multimodal Bridge, and the Beth Condon Path in Yarmouth. And this option would leave PACS with a future construction commitment of 12 to 16 million, again, depending on the Saco Bridge alternative. This slide shows the highest cost alternative um, where the total is about 16 million in future costs. And this slide shows the lowest cost alternative. 
Now, staff called this allocation the limited allocation with savings because it leaves about $1 million unallocated. Um, that's what's labeled as leftover in the table. And this, this leftover or this savings may help with some of the future construction costs, but it also leaves money sitting idle, not out in the economy, which goes against the motivation behind uh, main DOT's two-phase PDR first policy. Um, so as I've said, there are many different variations on these options and there's no one right answer on how to allocate the funds. Staff's recommendation is option one, which funds all five new PDR projects and the two existing construction projects in South Portland and Westbrook. And staff also recommends allocating the remaining FHWA funds, about $900,000 to Wyndham for the Route 302 North Wyndham sidewalk project if Wyndham is interested and able to increase their local match. Um, staff selected this option for a few reasons. Uh, it funds PDR for three of the top four highest scoring projects. So these are regionally significant projects. It gets more projects closer to shovel ready status, making them more competitive for any future discretionary uh, funding opportunities. And while five PDRs is a significant commitment, the YARM and GORM projects, so the projects ranked third, fourth, and fifth, are relatively less resource intensive. So the cost for these three projects combined is less than the Libby Town project alone or the Saco project alone. And also this option provides additional construction funding for the South Portland and Westbrook projects, which received construction funding before the PDR first policy was in place. Now that policy helps ensure that construction estimates and therefore construction allocations are more accurate from the beginning. PAC's uh, Regional Transportation Advisory Committee, or RTAC, discussed the allocation of funds for complex projects on July, July 6th. And during the discussion, it became clear that two separate issues were coming up. First, of course, making a recommendation regarding the allocation of funds for this year. And then also considering revisions to the policies for the future. Um, so regarding this year, RTAC did vote to recommend staff's recommendation. The vote was 14 in favor, one opposed with one abstention. And with this vote, the committee discussed and recognized um, a few different things. One, Wyndham funded its own PDR, uh, something which is not currently incorporated in the scoring criteria. PAX has already committed a significant amount of funding for future construction, um, but also the region wants to position itself to be ready to take advantage of potential future discretionary funding or even increases in formula funding. Um, and finally, there is no perfect option. Now, regarding the other issue that came up at RTAC, future policy re revisions, much of this discussion was centered around the financial sustainability of the program, recognizing that PAC's annual allocation often isn't enough to cover the construction cost of even one large project. Um, committee members discussed other funding sources, local match requirements, whether local funding contributions should be reflected in project scoring, things like that. And committee members expressed a, a desire and a willingness to review the policies and the funding framework in the coming months to address some of these um, concerns before the next funding cycle. But back to the issue at hand, again, the recommendation from staff and RTAC is to allocate FHWA funding to all five new PDR projects that are ready to receive federal funds, the two existing construction projects in South Portland and Westbrook, and to offer the remaining FHWA funds between 850 and 950,000 approximately, uh, depending on the Saco Bridge alternative, to Wyndham, for the Route 203 North Wyndham sidewalk project, if Wyndham is interested and able to increase its local match. So the PACS Policy Board is asked to consider these recommendations along with all the other information and approve a list of complex projects for FHWA funding. <laughs>